Hey guys, TJ here, and welcome back to another video. I have built a lot of villages in Minecraft, in the plains, hidden in the forests, and on top of the hills. And people have asked me a lot of questions about them. What is the best place to start building? How do I decide what blocks to use? How do I decide where specific buildings within my village should be? In today's episode, I am going to answer those questions and explain to you from my own perspective using 10 easy steps, how you plan and of course build villages in Minecraft. Before we start, if you end up enjoying this video or find any of the tips I give you helpful, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. These videos take quite long to make and it would make me very happy. As a tiny disclaimer, the tips and tricks I'll be giving you in this video will mainly focus on medieval and Nordic builds. Anyway, let's get started. Starting off with number one, location. Just as with castles, it is important to choose a suitable as well as realistic location for your village. It will be most logical to build your village near a water source or on top of a hill. When choosing a location for your settlement, it is incredibly important that you have already established what type of village it is going to be. A mining settlement, a logging village or just a small farming hamlet. I mean, you would not be building a fishing settlement somewhere where there isn't any water nearby. Also, keep in mind that if you are building on a hill or a mountain, you might have limited space to build. So plan carefully. Number 2. The building density and size. For this one, I have one simple rule. The bigger the houses you build, the more space you will need in between the buildings. For example, if you build a lot of tall houses close to each other, the village is going to look very strange and out of proportion. As you can see here, it looks nicer if large buildings are a little bit more spread out. Of course, if the houses you build are relatively small, you can build them closer to each other. That's also why, if you have limited space on an island or a hill, I would recommend using a smaller size for your houses because it just looks more pleasing to the eye. Number 3. The layout. One of the most important steps of this episode, the layout. How are you going to plan your village? A good step to begin with is to build most of your more notable buildings in the center of the village. For example, a church looks much nicer if it is situated in the middle of the settlement than somewhere on the edge. The same goes for squares, banks and other important structures. Of course, a notable workshop like a logger or a stonecutter could also be situated somewhere else within the settlement, but it also depends on your surroundings. The best village layout in my eyes would look something like this. Bigger buildings in the center, surrounded by less notable buildings, which are then surrounded by small stables and of course the fields, in case you are building a farming settlement. I would recommend that you will almost always make the fields around the village and not somewhere inside. Also, don't build the fields too far away from your village because you know, why wouldn't they have built the town close to the Virtual Lands if they are at a totally different location. Of course, you could always make some tiny yards and other types of gardens within the village, but for the main fields, on the outside please. Also, make sure all of your buildings are connected with each other by pathways. The main roads to the village could obviously be made wider. Step 4. Building style and block types. Designing a style is actually an entire topic on its own, but I am going to give you a few tips that could help you what style you will use. First off, make sure you use a block palette that would fit. For this village you see over here, I used a combination of spruce wood and dark oak wood with a deep slate roof, which as you can see works quite well. Don't build a house out of sandstone with a prismarine roof. That won't work out. Nor should you use too many blocks in your palette because that would look way too messy. But this also depends on the size of your build. Secondly, use blocks that suit the surroundings. If you're building in a forest, it will be very logical to build your houses mostly out of wood, while a mining settlement can have more stone involved in the bases. When you build in a darker environment, like a spruce forest, then your build should also have darker colors as well. But when you build in a desert or a lush rainforest, you can use more popping colors. I also said this in my castle video, don't build with spruce wood in the desert or with red sandstone in the snow. That just looks weird. Also, an extra thing I would like to mention, don't build your roofs out of stone, that material is far too heavy for a roof. Number 5. Consistency. I often see people build villages and use over 10 different house designs and styles in the same build. That just doesn't work out if you're building classic medieval or nordic style builds. Most of the time villages had limited resources to build their settlements so having too many different block palettes or details might make it a little bit unrealistic as well. I'm not telling you to copy literally every house because that will look boring. 
For example, try to design about five different types of houses, three different windows, six different shapes, and four different roof shapes out of the same block palette and mix them with each other. Number six, purpose and occupations. If you follow up my steps, you already have established what type of village you are building. If you really want your village to come to life, it is important that you decide a function for every build in your settlement, as well as how they are all connected with each other. This is going to be a butcher, here lives a gardener, or this is where the smith is situated with his living quarters upstairs. Depending on what the function of a specific house is, you can also add details and variations to that build according to its occupation. For example, outside a smith you could build a little overhang with a working station and blast furnace beneath it. Some occupations should also have a specific location. A fisherman would live close to the water, a lumberjack close to the forest and a cleric near the church. This makes your village more lively and more coherent. Number 7. Walls First things first, a village doesn't necessarily require a wall. Although small villages situated in fields and forests where lots of wildlife lives did have a small wall out of wood around the settlement to keep wild animals at bay. Settlements of a bigger size or that are located in less peaceful areas could have a more advanced or higher wall, out of stone for example, with watchtowers and a proper gate. Although rivers or tiny cliffs could also serve as a natural defense. Of course, you could also think about more original ways of building defenses around your village if you really want to add more depth to your build. For example, some villages in the northern areas of our world are surrounded by rings of fire to protect them from so-called ice crawlers, which are dangerous to humans but fear fire. Number 8. Custom Fields If you are building a farming village, you will obviously build fields around your settlement. Even logging and fishing villages did have some fields as a source of food next to the town. So most of the time you will have one in your build. When I build a farming settlement I always build at least a few custom fields. These make your build much more unique as well as in my opinion way cooler. They do take significantly longer to build but here are some examples. And yes, this is also survival dependent. A wheat farm could be much more convenient to build because it gives more food. But if you like building, please try this. Number 9. Blend with surroundings. As I said earlier, make sure you use a block type that fits your surroundings. But it is also important that you make your town blend in with the surroundings. Make it look like as if it is part of the region and not some random square pasted in the middle of the area. There are a few ways of doing this. If you are building on a tall hill or mountain, you could build some of the houses within the rocks or place some boulders around the settlement. When building in or close to a forest, make sure you also place some trees scattered around the settlement. And for farming villages, some farmlands around the town can already do the job. A pathway leading in and out of the settlement, as well as fill up the bare fields around the town with some grass could also help. And finally, number 10, lore and depth. As I said, occupations and functions of your specific builds add a lot of depth and liveliness to your village. But what it makes stand out even more is if you add some lore to the build. What happened in the past? Did this village participate in any wars or other conflicts? Who rules over this land? You could make this lore stand out even more by adding your own custom details like memorials, statues or custom banners. Maybe you could even have a forgotten sewer system or dungeon beneath the village, or some ruined builds from the past on the side. The possibilities on this one are actually endless, but very important. And just as you expected this episode to be over, I also have a bonus tip for you guys. The interior. I will promise the next tips and tricks video is going to be about the interior. I won't be able to explain all the things you must know for interior in this episode, but I do have some examples for your village. If you did enjoy today's episode or find any of the things I told you helpful then definitely be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to build medieval villages in Minecraft. If you still have any questions you could always ask them in the comment section or join our discord where there are lots of other builders that would be happy to try to help out. Anyway guys have a very nice day and see you next time. Bye bye!